everywhere they go. They will be publicly shamed as pariahs. Your parties will end up making their lives miserable. Everything you touch dies. Hashtag Dinesh D'Souza. <laughs> Mindset, 
How can you argue to give up our guns to a government that you think is run by a dictator? Is this how the thinking goes down? Hey, you know, we've got a dictator for president. Yeah, he's just like Hitler. Uh, by the way, John, what do you think about taking away the Second Amendment, taking away guns? Yeah, we don't need it. We don't have to worry about a tyrannical government. Ta-da! Gun control advocates want to ban assault rifles. Yet, when asked, many of these liberals can't even explain to you or tell you what it is. Many of these liberal lunatics hate the police, screaming and calling them pigs at protests, claiming that the police are unjustly targeting young black men because of racial profiling and essentially shooting them for no reason. Remember, hands up, don't shoot, once again. Please tell me how you're not going to further empower your imagined racist police state by taking away guns from law-abiding Americans and young black men. You know who also didn't like young black Americans owning firearms? Ah, oh, that's right, the KKK. Isn't that a little awkward that now the Democrats are wanting to take away guns from Americans, including young black men? Ooh, that's kind of awkward, huh? Considering the history between the Democrat Party and the KKK? Awkward. Liberals took to social media to defend MS-13 members when President Trump called them animals. Yet just weeks ago, liberals were demanding that the immigrant caravan fleeing from MS-13 be let into the United States. How can they defend these MS-13 animals all the while arguing that immigrant refugees be allowed into the United States while fleeing these MS-13 gang member animals? How can they hold two conflicting thoughts at the same time? Liberal logic on full display. It's like they're not even using their brains. Liberals go out and march to help save premature babies. Yet the very next day, they can go out and march for the killing of millions of premature unborn babies. How can they both march to help save premature babies and for the right to abort premature babies? Many of these liberals can engage in both of these marches and see nothing conflicting about it. Is this just virtue signaling or another example of liberal logic? That's a bit awkward. 100,000 liberals took to the streets to march for science. They demand that we listen to climate change. They demand that we listen to science. Yet, when it comes to gender and sex chromosomes, these same people demand that we don't listen to science. How can they both listen to science and ignore science at the same time? Could it be that they're just repeating mainstream media talking points? A Christian baker refused to bake a cake for a gay couple's wedding. Liberals say he should be forced to bake the cake even though it's a privately owned business. Meanwhile, liberals support social media sites kicking conservatives off their platforms with the justification that it's a privately owned business. The search to solve this mystery of liberal logic may never be solved, but with your help, maybe we can. Infowars.com In January of 2017, there was a massive protest and riot in Washington, D.C. that led to the arrest of several hundred people. Many of these people were charged with felonies and conspiracy, but ultimately a lot of them did get the charges dropped, and some people did plead guilty. The latest news is that more charges are being dismissed, and the reason why is actually it's rather scary. So I'll ask you this. 
What is worse than a bunch of angry protesters and rioters smashing up windows? And I would say it's when the government withholds evidence from the defense in order to get people convicted. But before we get started, make sure you head over to youtube.com slash timcastnews. This is my backup channel. There will be a little button here that will